Hello Dr. Humans, welcome back to the channel and to part two of our mini series on azathioprine. In part one, we covered the mechanism of action of this medication and in today's video, we will be unpacking the key pathways which break down azathioprine, the drug interactions and why you should never prescribe allopurinol together with azathioprine and we will also be covering TPMT deficiency, how you detect this, how you manage this and also why you should never be reassured when you see normal TPMT testing. I'll hand over to my little cartoon buddy to take you through it. So coming back to azathioprine being transformed into 6MP. 6MP undergoes a whole lot of metabolism into active metabolites and inactive metabolites. The active metabolites will elicit the immunosuppressant effect like we just discussed and some of these will act as purine analogues and some will reduce de novo purine synthesis. And these various pathways lead to potential side effects. For example, this pathway promotes myelosuppression, which in some people could be life-threatening. Whereas this pathway leads to liver toxicity. And thankfully, we do have further pathways which break down these active metabolites into inactive metabolites. And if we zoom out a little, we can see that these metabolic pathways which limit the toxicity of azathioprine can be divided into two main mechanisms, methylation and Oxidation. Methylation is performed by TPMT, also known as thiopurine S methyltransferase, whilst oxidation is performed by xanthine oxidase. And so whenever we prescribe azathioprine, we are relying on these enzymes to turn active metabolites into inactive metabolites. But as you're likely aware, these pathways can be subject to enzyme deficiencies and drug interactions, which make azathioprine a potentially dangerous medication in certain circumstances. And we as doctors need to be mindful of these potential dangers of azathioprine. So let's take a look at these pathways in turn. Let's start with oxidation. This is performed by xanthine oxidase. Yes, the same enzyme that we block with xanthine oxidase inhibitors such as allopurinol. If we prescribe allopurinol to someone on azathioprine, and we make no dose adjustments at all, we could literally kill that patient. This drug interaction has the potential to cause life-threatening bone marrow suppression. And as far as teaching this to you on YouTube is concerned, I would have to say, do not prescribe these drugs in combination. Now that's not to say that some very experienced clinicians are using these drugs together in a very controlled, thoughtful fashion with extreme dose adjustments. However, if this is not your area of expertise, then do not prescribe these together. But I will circle back towards the end to show you a neat little trick that some specialists do use in their clinical practice, which involves combining these drugs deliberately. So be sure to stick around till the end to check that out, but I'm in no way suggesting that you do this in your clinical practice. Okay, with that rant over and oxidation officially under our belts, let's shimmy over to methylation. Methylation is performed by TPMT. When it comes to this enzyme, there are three possible scenarios. Scenario one is having normal amounts of the enzyme. Azathioprine can be tolerated at normal doses. It's happy days. Then there's scenario number two, TPMT deficiency, which means that azathioprine must be dose adjusted or completely avoided to prevent adverse events. And scenario three, quite the opposite, this person has too much TPMT, which would tend to limit the therapeutic effect of azathioprine, but also increases the risk of liver toxicity. Now we'll come back to unpack that liver toxicity in just a tick, but first let's deepen our understanding of scenario number two, TPMT deficiency. TPMT is coded for by the TPMT gene. So far, so good. And this gene has around 40 different alleles in humans. Allele number one is the wild type normal gene with a level of activity which is very capable of breaking down azathioprine 
when it needs to. But there are other alleles which don't work quite so well and people with these alleles have a relative TPMT deficiency. Now we all have two alleles, meaning two copies of the gene, one from mum and one from dad. And the degree of TPMT deficiency is going to depend on which alleles we have. If you have one normal gene and one deficiency gene, then you'll have a heterozygous TPMT deficiency meaning you'll have around 50% of the usual TPMT function. In this scenario, you would need to have the azathioprine dose adjusted by 50% or so. But if you have two deficient TPMT genes, then you have a homozygous deficiency and your ability to methylate and break down azathioprine and 6MP is extremely limited. And people with this problem should not receive azathioprine under no circumstances. I repeat, people with a homozygous deficiency in TPMT should never, ever, 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 ever be prescribed azathioprine under any circumstance because they could die of bone marrow suppression. And so we should seek alternative therapies in such a person. And whilst statistically speaking, most people are likely to tolerate azathioprine just fine, the risk is real for those who do have TPMT deficiency. And so if it's within your power to check for a TPMT deficiency before you prescribe azathioprine or 6MP, then that's going to be the best thing to do. Which brings me to, how do you test for TPMT deficiency? There are two ways to do this. There's a TPMT assay, which will check the functional level of the enzyme inside red cells, and there's genetic testing. Now, here in Australia, the genetic testing for TPMT genes is Medicare reimbursed. So we have easy access to this, and genetic testing is therefore favoured. But that might be different where you are. You might only have access to the TPMT assay. But something to know about the TPMT assay is that because it's done using red blood cells, if someone has had a recent blood transfusion, so they've got someone else's red cells kicking around, their TPMT assay is not going to be truly reflective of their own natural TPMT levels. And in the articles that I came across, they did tend to suggest that genetic testing was superior in terms of helping us to tailor the dose of azathioprine to reduce adverse events. But even if you have done genetic testing before you prescribe these drugs, you should not feel reassured. You should be on red alert. Even with normal genetics, you still need to watch out for the bone marrow suppression because when we do genetic testing, we only test for the most common problematic alleles, namely number two, 3A and 3C. And 90% of the time that will capture the issue, but not always. So even if your genetic testing comes back okay, you still need to be monitoring your patients on the azathioprine, looking for bone marrow suppression, because it is actually still possible that genetic testing will not capture someone at risk. So just be aware that genetic testing is not perfect and we need to be vigilant with everyone we prescribe these drugs to. So we check the genetics where this is available, if they have a homozygous deficiency, we avoid azathioprine. If they have a heterozygote situation, we can use azathioprine at lower doses. If they have no genetic TPMT deficiencies that we can detect, we use normal doses of azathioprine, but we still remain on red alert for any bone marrow suppression. Okay, so coming back to those three scenarios, we have well and truly covered scenario two, where patients have a TPMT deficiency. And now I want to shift gears to discuss the complete opposite of this, scenario three, where we have a very enthusiastic TPMT enzyme that are methylating their little hearts out, and this comes with its own set of problems. <laughs> 